Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the Uber Eats clone app and in the last video we talked about the user session management using cookies or uh, using JWT token. So now uh, I will just talk theoretically. Okay, let's say if you don't want to write user authentication service then how you can achieve the same thing, right? So uh, let's say if you might have heard about the Auth0 or zero is also an authentication provider which is really powerful or zero here it's let's say this is our auth zero what change we have to do for to use the auth zero as a provider obviously we are not going to write a user management in our application so let's say this is my react app or any kind of app uh, Let's say this is my React app. Okay. So I will go to Auth0. Auth0 is actually third party provider. I will go there and I will create an application. What I will do is I will create an app on Auth0 console and that will give me the client ID. That client ID I will configure in my React application. So obviously I need to use Auth0 SDK or whatever. So this is create, I mean react app and here we will use auth0 SDK now and you will just provide a, some kind of a button when you click on to that button or some login form because now authentication is not done by you, you just create a button saying or just to create a route right route let's say for the login and this login will take you to a simple login screen which is auth0 login screen because now you are already using the auth0 client id and you are using auth0 sdk so it knows what needs to be done if user session doesn't exist so it will present you to auth0 login screen okay you will be entering the username password that's for sure because there will be a console it will prompt you just pass your username and password okay and then because this is you uh, I mean this is your user I mean this is you uh, developer who actually created an application on Auth0 saying that i wanted to create an authentication system for the front end web app okay you entered all the information here you need to enter a lot of information like callback url application name uh, what is the redirect url and all those information you have already configured you you have already conveyed auth0 that once user is successfully logged in through the auth0 then redirect the user to my login callback screen so this is let's say the callback this is the front end route. Once the user is able to successfully log in, log in, uh, redirect user to the login callback. I mean, so this auth0 will be able to redirect user to this particular route. But what is happening when you enter the username password, you are going to the you are going to talk to the auth0. Auth0 will take you the consent from the user. Okay. Do you want to allow this particular application? this Auth0 app which you configured here to, to read your data from Auth0 database and here is your Auth0 database maybe like the Auth0 systems which are checking that your username password is correct because Auth0 is managing your information I mean whatever username, password, metadata, app metadata, everything about you now Auth0 will take a consent that can I share your data to this react application and when you say yes then it will redirect you to the that application and typically this is what happens to all the auth all the auth protocol like uh, either you use auth0 either you use a google provider or a social facebook provider what happens is let's say if i want to use a facebook so this is my facebook here i will create an application on the facebook facebook developer console and you will get a client ID from the Facebook and that client ID or client secret you will configure on the front end 
and you will provide one button okay login login with facebook right login with facebook now what facebook will do is facebook will pre present you a login screen a login screen and where you will enter your facebook credentials because it's not your username password you don't have your account in the application you will enter your facebook username password then facebook will say okay your credentials are correct it will check in check in its own system and then it will say it will ask the consent okay do you want to share this information with this react app do you want to share your user information with this react app which some developer has configured and has the client id in using it and you will say consent yes then facebook will look into the application which you have configured here what is the callback url and all and then it will redirect you again to this front end react app with the access token okay this is like login with the google login with facebook twitter whatever and now it's on you how you uh, manage the tokens and all but this is how it works in auth0 auth protocol auth0 is universally powerful because in auth0 you can configure all these social providers enterprise providers saml connections social provider connections and all everything here here we are using database simple auth0 database connection where you are entering the username password okay so you onboarded this authentication mechanism to auth0 and this is using auth protocol what happens is you first create an application and then you if you are giving your responsibility of authentication to a third party provider so auth0 will ask you the consent okay do you want to share your information which is stored in the auth0 to this react app if it says yes then auth0 will return access token and then react application with this access token can ask your application data which is protected so you need to have a token provided by auth0 so there is a resource resource server which is your apis this these are your this is your resource server and this is your uh, authorizer authorizer your auth0 so once you have a token you will get that token and ask the authorizer is this token valid can i access this search data and all it's just uh, out of curiosity i wanted to explain this topic nothing much now we want to create a development platform okay these days docker is powerful it's not like okay we are writing a monolith here and not writing a single front end app so what my always idea is i use docker for everything on my front end and every type of development for now we are going to have at least minimal three applications which is one is a proxy one is a front end and one is a authentication service these things will grow day by day right so it is it not better to create, use the use the docker containers and run those let's say this is your authentication service this is my proxy service and your front end you can run using just npm run dev but let's say the order service search service tomorrow you might need elastic search rabbit mq or something like that right so what we are doing here is we are already using nest.js which is already decided so this is the nest.js app this is so these are actually microservices what we are doing is we are building a individual microservices and microservice word is really a hype when you heard microservice it is like something out of the box no whatever we were doing earlier now we are just doing a minimal we just converted whatever the service we are writing into micro so that it is totally decoupled with other set of services if i need to fetch the user data or something i or search data i don't need to talk to another service it should be a minimal so that whatever the user needs it should be able to provide it and we are using docker containers let's say i'm going to use postgres so on local setup we are going to use docker containers postgres also we are going to spin up using docker and all these services are going to have their own database uh, proxy doesn't have a database we don't need to manage a database for this but let's say other services we are going to build they will have databases their own database because we don't have a shared database each and every service will have their own database and we will interact with that this is a proxy service and maybe this is your front end
front end you can then just simply npm run dev or you can also create a container for it so everything is like inside one dockerized environment why we actually need dockerized environment first of all because now we don't we are not going to install postgres on my system so that i can connect to the node this application what we do is we spin up the docker containers for the postgres for the mongodb mysql that's it and then your if you want to because these are the containers and container is something like this uh let's talk about the container a little bit little bit docker container if you are interested like what is docker container you can actually look into my playlist which is already there this is the docker container and what what is the what it is provides it's actually a minimal linux container which is able to run nginx postgres mysql mongodb so if i want to use a mongodb or mysql i will connect to this container now these containers exposes two ports container port and host port this is let's say the host port and this is container port now the port mapping let's say here i'm running on my laptop this is my laptop and i just wanted to connect to this container so obviously you will use the host port to connect to it but if there is an already a container already a node.js service running inside a container and there is already a container then you will use the container port to connect to this and to access this container port you both these containers should be inside a docker environment docker network for that we use docker compose okay so this whole environment i can convert that into a single docker container docker network so this can be your docker network and here you can put n number of services and why we talk about the docker when it comes to microservices because if you want to set up a local network local development system where you have multiple services if i need to talk to the do the log login i need a proxy also available proxy service also running so we will create a docker network and that can be created using docker compose so it's just a utility which is available in the docker tool docker compose up we write a docker compose yml put all these containers to put all these applications these individual applications will, will also have a docker files because docker containers gets created through the docker file for the services and for other docker containers it will pull from the docker hub like postgres image it will pull uh, mysql mongodb for this node.js service because we need to deploy our node.js code and run the node.js service on this container so we will write a docker file we'll install and it it will have a node.js and it will do npm run start it's like your small linux container is there which is running a node.js service and let's say this service is running on there will be defined port it's running on port 3000 this is running on 3001 so we know we will define all these ports and this is how they will communicate with one another so these concepts are important and you should be aware how to use docker at least if not then you can look into one of my playlist is already there so let's talk about simple authentication service first we are going to create a minimal microservice which will do all those things we can expose the endpoints which is like login register and uh, validate reset password forget password all these kind of uh, rest endpoints from this rest api okay i want i am I, I can create a one video of like three hours but sometimes it's also tiring for me so i create these chunk of videos like one video max of 20 minutes now coming to the node.js service if you are not familiar with the microservice concept much then there is a node.js microservice playlist already available which talks about core very basics because here i cannot talk about node.js microservice development and all and docker compose like docker in depth but you can refer those i will send a link in next video uh, we will set up a baseline the next.js code with the docker compose and all and uh, we will write our uh, modules okay let's see that in the next video